Welcome to the Ricky Matthews Show, where we celebrate every single day the great people who are working in the trenches to make this place, Mississippi, such a great place to live, work, and play. You know, we're uh, we're we're in Thanksgiving season, and listen, I know I've said it a hundred times on this show recently, but where did this year go? It amazes me that we are now in a moment where tomorrow is Thanksgiving and families are coming together. Those of us who enjoy the outdoors will be headed into the woods and, uh, you know, with family and friends and doing those kinds of things. It's it's amazing, though, that it seems like we were just complaining about the drought and now we've had some rain and a little bit cooler temperatures and and we're starting to decorate for Christmas, and we're, you know, we're also reflecting about what we're thankful about, and we'll be doing more of that here in just a second. I got one quick quote to share with you that I found uh, on my history book that I get every morning, and uh, in this particular case, it was uh, it was a, a listing of Bobby Kennedy's uh, birth in night back in 1925, and one thing he said along the way was this: "Only those who dare to fail greatly can ever achieve." greatly. Only those who dare to fail greatly can ever achieve greatly. Our next guest is my friend, Mac McDonald from the Coast Coliseum. And he knows he knows that quote extremely well, because to be successful like they have to be in this entre- entrepreneurial effort we call the Mississippi Gulf, Gulf Coast Coliseum and Convention Center, you have to be willing to fail. And Matt knows that extraordinarily well. How you doing, my friend? I'm doing really good, Ricky. I just try to limit that failure to to the absolute minimum these days. Yeah, you've had. Uh, you know what is a. You know, you you ever get tired of winning? <laughs> never. Never, <laughs> never, never, never. You guys, you guys are doing. It. But you know, you say it, but you, 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 you place, you place good bets. If you go back and look at the work you guys did during the pandemic and the work you've done coming out of the pandemic with the, with the physical investments you've made in assets there that have given you the opportunity to, to attract bigger acts. The fact is, um, you still have to take risks. If you want to win big, you got to take risks, don't you? You do, and you have to measure those risks, and that's really the secret to, to our success is the fact that we we have a lot of resources that we can pull from to where we can analyze deals, we can, we can um, pr- project what the revenue streams are, and, and really what the uh, underlying uh, mitigated risks are that we uh, are, are looking at, and very seldom do we ever get into something where we really think that we, we're going to have a problem. Uh, occasionally, we may step out a little bit, but for the most part, uh, the events that we're doing are, are, are very, very uh, uh, modest in terms of risk, but the rewards have been great. They really have, and, and it reflects on our, on our balance sheet. Uh, once again, we completed our, our fiscal year, September 30th, uh, 2023 year. Uh, fiscal year uh, beat 2022, which was the greatest year that we ever had. So it just keeps going. And, and how we started in the month of October, what we've done in November, what we, we've got on, on the books for December, January, February, March, April, May, June, July, in the next year tells me that, that we're on a three-year run and it may go even longer than that. Matt, what's really cool is you think about this um, for people who have not heard us talk before. You got a terrific board of commissioners that is supporting you, and as I personally got to observe when I came to join you for the judge concert and sort of see what's going on behind the scenes long before the concert, early in the day, I just kind of rode your coattail to kind of see what it takes to pull off a, a concert like that and then during the concert to get a sense of the behind the scenes and whatever. But you've got a great team around you and, and you've had a, you've had this team. Most of the members of that team have been with you for quite a while and it's a, kind of a well-oiled machine. So you're not, you don't, you never feel like you're alone on this journey, do you? No. And, and having a, a, a board of directors that, that love what you do, get excited about the successes that you bring to them month after month after month. Uh, that's very important. And not only that, uh, the Harris County Board of Supervisors have been tremendous in terms of their support, uh, you know, their uh, wisdom to, to make sure we don't step off in any, into anything too crazy. Uh, they, they have been a really, really strong backbone for us. And while we don't go to them very often for help, 
the few times that we have, they've, they've delivered and they've done it in a fashion that makes this building better and, and brings uh, more to the table where we can go out and get more business and, and create more economic impact for Harrison County and for uh, coastal Mississippi as a whole. I think it's terrific, you know, and ch sometimes change is good. The board has been pretty solid for many years. That's the Har Harrison County Board of Supervisors. We've got a couple of new members going to be coming on. Uh, again, change is good. Some new blood. It's going to be a real opportunity. I, I've studied both of the new members that are going to be joining, and they both seem solid as a rock. And I can't imagine that that you will have anything other than their support going forward. So, oh, I think I think I think that the two new members will be great. Um, they understand what we do. That that that's the the easy part is the fact that that if you live in this community. Uh, you have to be living under a rock to know that, that we've been successful and that we've got a lot of things that reach a lot of different people uh, that are that's creating that economic impact. Hey, listen, when we come back in the second half, we'll uh, we'll start to break down uh, the the incredible schedule. Uh, you keep you keep announcing big acts, and I want to really encourage people to stay with us for the second segments as we break down what some of those successes are. But you know, listen, it's Wednesday before Thanksgiving. You know, we've got a lot to be thankful for, don't we, my friend? Yes, sir, we do. You know, um, our economy and, and, and the way things are working here in South Mississippi is really different than a lot of other parts of the community. Sometimes they say we're last to, to the table, uh, but you know what? Maybe being last in this you know, particular case isn't a bad thing because we've been at the table for a while, and it looks like we're going to stay at the table for a while. So you know what? While I pay attention to what's going on around us and, and, and particularly in our industry throughout the country, uh, what we're doing here in, in South Mississippi and in this particular region of the country, uh, you know what? I'll put it up against pretty much anybody out there. You know, uh, and then personally, I've watched you uh, and your wife enjoy your new set of twins, your grandkids, and enjoy your son. I, I think the same way. I lost my mother a couple of months ago, and it's you know, so I mean, we had a she had a wonderful life, and and God bless her. But you know, be the first sort of holiday without my mom, and it, that that causes you to be a little reflective as well. You know, look around you and say, "Man, the one thing we can all be sure <clears throat> sure of is that we're here in this moment. <laughs> there are no promises about tomorrow." So Thanksgiving is a is an opportunity to really count your personal blessings, isn't it? Yes, sir. And and, and those twin boys uh, that, that my son and his wife have, they just celebrated their first birthday. And they are about as fun as you can even imagine. They're 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 starting to walk. They're they'll be talking soon enough, and it only gets better. It's just that when you have two of them, everything is is more than double. So that's why we're having more than double the fun. Well, if I, as I say on the show all the time, I have four grandkids. I'm so blessed and. When they come into the house here, when I go to their house, I mean, the first thing they want to know is where's Papa, you know, and we're going to go outside and play or we're going to go fish or we're going to go throw the net or throw birds, you know, bread to the birds or throw the ball. I mean, listen, I just can't get enough. And if, if that's what soaking up the moment looks like, man, I am all in on that. And I, You're doing the same thing. No, we, listen. The only the only difference is is that yours probably live a little bit closer. Mine are over in Pensacola, so I don't get to see them all the time. But but I'm looking forward to seeing them as much as I can. Yeah, there's there's no doubt about that. My son J Justin, who lives in New York City, and he's been dating the same amazing person for a while now, and she's terrific. But she's from L.A., you know, and he li they both live in New York. So when they do get married and have kids, the chances, especially given what he does, he does international consulting for Price Waterhouse. He'd be, in fact, he's preparing for a meeting in India as we speak. The chance of him coming back here are probably slim, slim to none. So thank your, your lucky stars that your, yours only live in Pensacola because it looks like mine are going to live in, it, in uh, New York City. <laughs> so, well, there's, there, there's always Skype and there's always uh, uh, that, that telephone that you can FaceTime on. So yeah, you got that, that you know, FaceTime actually has changed the nature of the long distance relationship anymore. Because yeah. even though we only see Justin two or three times a year, 
the fact is we talk to him, you know, at least every other day and we get to see him, you know, we get to check to see if he's tired or looking sick or, you know what I mean? That's, that's important. Hey, I got, I got to sing happy birthday to my, to my grandkids uh, via FaceTime uh, uh, several days ago. So that was, that was a cool thing. You know, I couldn't have done that with my children. <laughs> no, no doubt about it. Hey, listen, like I said, when we get back on the other side after the break, we're going to talk about uh, some of the big announcements that my, my friend Matt McDonald and the Coast Coliseum have have uh, have um, announced recently. He's a big Alabama fan. Alabama's taken on uh, quite a, uh, a momentum. It will be interesting to see where it goes from here. But when we get on the other side, we'll continue our conversation with my friend Matt McDonald. Welcome back to the Ricky Matthews Show. I have my friend Matt McDonald. You know, one of the one of the great things about having the opportunity to do this show is to get stay in touch with people who I had great relationships with when I was at the Sun Herald many years ago. But this has been a great chance to reconnect and to spend the necessary time, which I didn't have in my prior world, to get to know these people better, to see what they do, even go visit them. In the case of Matt, which I did, uh, it's great to see the work of the Coast Coliseum. They're such an economic engine for coastal Mississippi. And I'm really proud of that team. I've actually been able to see them firsthand and see what they do. And they are dedicated and they don't take anything for granted. They definitely don't take anything for granted. Um, Matt, before we go to uh, the latest on the big announcements that you've made, I mentioned Alabama football before we went to the break. All As, they, as you know, all of my dad's brothers and all of his family, big, big time Alabama fans, Never missed a game, you know, had had a Winnebago with roll tide on the side of it. You know the deal. And uh, and then all the grandkids went to Auburn. I'm not sure why that worked out that way, but that's certainly what happened. They play Auburn this weekend, but they've really been building ahead of steam, haven't they? It's been an interesting season. They kind of started off a little sluggish. I went up to see them get beat by a, a better Texas team that – uh, I still think it's pretty good. I don't know that they're uh, hitting on all cylinders like they were when they uh, rolled us in Brian Denny Stadium. But we seem to have figured out our quarterback situation, and the team is uh, really starting to play good together. And, and they figured out who their playmakers are and they're making a lot of stuff happen. I saw them beat LSU. I saw them beat Tennessee. I saw them beat Arkansas. I saw them beat Ole Miss. I saw them beat Mississippi State. And that's hard to do on Saturdays in the fall when you have as much business as we do. But the schedule just kind of fell that way. And I'm going to get to go see him play uh, Saturday uh, at the loveliest village on the plains. I mean, so the Alabama quarterback went from, uh oh, what, what, what's this? We're not sure about this. You know, this, the chemistry's not there. What's going on? Now he's actually, I saw the list in the of Heisman considerations. You know, he's gone from who is this guy to really building the head of steam. That's been fun to watch, hasn't it? It has been, but he, he, he was recruited as a tremendous athlete, and that's what he is, and he has absolutely uh, morphed into a really good quarterback. This may be uh, Coach Saban's greatest coaching job in the 17 years or however long he's been in Alabama. This is a phenomenal job he's done to uh, get the chemistry and, and to mesh it the way he had to do in midseason form, yeah. and, and it's yeah. playing out. So we'll see. Hopefully they're not on the outside looking in. Uh, after the championship uh, weekend the following week. And for people listening on the radio, I'm looking at a life-size uh, cutout of uh, Coach Saban behind him. Tons of Alabama paraphernalia. And then up there on the top are memorabilia, not paraphernalia. And then then you have a, a great photo uh, on the uh, or painting on the wall there for Alabama. So he's a true Alabama fan, as most Alabama fans are. But and, I and, say, a, and a graduate, I might add. I will say back to I know you are. I will say back to you, War Eagle, because <laughs> my son Justin is an Auburn graduate, and uh, we love Auburn football. Although this year has not been good, but they're going to be good. They're going to be good in the years to come. I think they got they got the right coach now. Mr. Okay, Freeze, Mr. Freeze so is, you've got yeah. some amazing stuff coming up that's going to fill the Coliseum up, and you got to be super excited about that. We have a, a, a really good December um, as well as January, February, March, April, May, June, July. Uh, you know, it, it, we've got Hardy coming in December the 9th. This is a Mississippi product, okay? Uh, big Mississippi State 
fan, I might add. He's a, he's a he's a, 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 a maroon and white bulldog through and through, and he's going to finish his tour right here in Biloxi, Mississippi on Saturday, December the 9th, and the show is completely sold out. Uh, it's going to be a big night for us. Major economic impact in early December here in South Mississippi. Hotel rooms, restaurants, casinos, all of those are going to feel the impact of Hardy and Laney Wilson coming to town to a sold-out show. Then we get into uh, USM Ole Miss basketball. We have not played college basketball in this building since way before COVID, maybe 2017, 2016. It's been a while. So to get college basketball back, and I might add, uh, Jay Ladner, hometown boy, made it good as coach of the USM Golden Eagles won 25 games last year. That's hard to do. I don't care what league you play in. 25 wins is 25 wins. Ole Miss has a new coach. Uh, Chris Beard is a phenomenal recruiter. He's a phenomenal game day coach. Ole Miss is going to have a good basketball team this year. So if you like college basketball, this is going to be a fun game on Saturday, December 23rd. We're going to tip it off at 1 p.m. So if you got a little last-minute Christmas shopping, a Christmas party, you want to take your wife out for an early Christmas Eve dinner, you got that opportunity because the game's going to be over by 3.30 in the afternoon, so you got plenty of time to rebound and, and take care of business on Saturday evening. Uh, then we come back in at, at, after the first of the year. Uh, lots of hockey. The hockey started back for us last week, and it really started out strong, stronger than it did last year. So we're looking for uh, better attendance, um, a better team on the ice. So we're, we're very optimistic about our 28-game home schedule. Uh, you can go on our website and get all of the dates for all of the home games for the Seawolves. Uh, we come in with Tool on De on January the 27th. And for y'all that may not be familiar with Tool, your your sister station is Ricky. And and I might add, they have done a phenomenal job getting our ticket counts higher than markets that are much bigger than ours. When we went on sale with Tool, we outperformed Atlanta, Georgia, Nashville, Tennessee, Birmingham, Alabama, uh, Fort Lauderdale, Florida. These are all markets that Tool's playing in, but yet. Little old Biloxi had ticket sales and ticket grosses that were higher than those bigger markets. So I was very, very impressed with that and very proud of that. And don't kid yourself, promoters all over the country see these ticket counts, and they know that what we're doing down here is working. But I have to give a shout-out to Kenny Vest and the folks at uh, CPR and the WTF Morning Show. They're making a lot of that happen. I told them that the other day on their when they had me on, and I mean that. Um, they're helping us with a, another rock show in late February, the 24th, I believe, uh, Disturbed. Once again, we were the third highest ticket count on the whole tour, and we're here in Biloxi, a small market. So shout out to Kenny Vest and the folks at WCPR. Uh, Journey will be back in here on February the 9th. Uh, we haven't had Journey in this building, in this market, since 1987. That's how long it's been. But Journey's going to come in and gross over a million dollars. So once again, another success story there with a different promoter that's not Live Nation. And that's also important. When you have multiple promoters now trying to get in this market to do major shows, that's because they know that there are people making money and the shows are being promoted correctly and the building's taking care of them from a production standpoint and the experience is great and the paydays are great. So so, so those are some of the shows we've got coming up. We've announced uh, Whiskey Myers for March the 9th. We've got Raleigh Green March 21st. Uh, we've got Leonard Skinner with ZZ Top. Probably the last time you'll ever see these bands again uh, April the 4th, uh, they, they, they play, they play for over 50 years. I don't know how much longer you're going to have the opportunity to see them. So that shows on April the 4th, we come in with Tim McGraw, I believe it's June the 13th. We've got more stuff. We're about to announce our crawfish festival lineup next week. So just a lot more activities going on at the building. And it seems like it just, you know, when I think uh, enough is enough, we get some more. <laughs> Isn't that great though? Yeah, it is. That's what we're supposed to do. I well, mean, like I said, do you ever get tired of winning? No, no. <laughs> hey, speaking of Kenny Vest, he's actually going to be joining me on Friday on the show. And I'm excited about having him on. I mean, the work that CPR has done is very unique. They still pick in the music, man. They still doing their, their Tuesday music picking that they do. And they've done that for how many years, Kyle? 26 years? How long have they done that? Since 95. 
Wow, it's well, incredible. And, and you, know, you know, Kyle, you go back, you go back pretty much all the way to '95, I believe, don't you? I do. Yeah, I started doing overnights then. Yeah, yeah. So, so you know what? To have a station like that in a market of this size is very rare. Okay, and we, uh, you talk about things to be thankful for. I'm thankful I've got a great rock station in the market because that helps us bring those that genre of music to this market. And when we're successful there. It, it lends itself to success in other genres with other promoters, and that's exactly what's happening. And once again, Kenny Vest and CPR folks, thank you all very much for what you do. Matt, when you look at you look at the numbers, which I have, I'm a numbers guy. Came from came from newspaper and and digital media, and numbers mean a lot to me. The numbers are so strong at CPR, so I'm not surprised. I mean, and the loyalty. And what's interesting is Kenny and and um, Kyle have helped me understand is that what we're doing. And Scott Fox, of course, is they're they're passing the love of that music to the next generation. So you have multiple generations that are listening to that station. That is rare in this this day and time, given the number of choices that people have. It, it, it really is. And, and, and the other thing is the fact that, you know, you take a band like Leonard Skinner and ZZ Top, there will be probably three plus generations of fans in to see that that show because of the fact that their music just keeps keeps living on. Yeah. But he and Scott Fox and, and the morning crew and, and all the DJs over there are doing with. CPR is the same thing. They're taking that 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 nineties music and turning it into a second generation of fans. And hopefully yeah. it'll be a third and fourth generation. And they still have this uh, uncanny ability to to pick out the new uh rock bands that are gonna gonna be there before anybody else can. It's just that, really... that helped us a lot here in the building. They got a great ear. Thanksgiving, Ricky. Yeah. And uh, you know, thank y'all for what y'all do for the community. And we do have a lot to be thankful for here in South Mississippi. You bet. Hey, this has been Matt McDonald from the Coast Coliseum. Have a great day. And, of course, happy Thanksgiving to everybody.